Welcome to the Education Over That channel. I am Sheena Hogan. I'm so glad you joined. This is a place where I give practical financial tips that anyone can understand and you can begin to implement now. Season two was all about relationships and money. Each week I've had a guest come onto the show and share with you their money story. My hope is that you leave the conversation with a new perspective, tip, or strategy that you can implement today. The Education Over Debt podcast is now streaming on Spotify, so be sure to check us out there and become a monthly subscriber for as little as 99 cents per month. We are also available on other podcast platforms, so if you don't have Spotify, you can also go there to check us out. And while you're checking us out, visit our website at educationoverdebt.com so that you can learn more about what we're doing in the community. We are now a 501c3 organization, and we are gladly accepting donations. The purpose of the foundation is to provide scholarship money to students obtaining their bachelor's degree. Today, we have a special guest with us. Her name is Kayla, and she's a college student at the University of Illinois with a major in urban planning. She is actually our first scholarship recipient. Kayla and I met under unusual circumstances. She actually applied for another scholarship that I was over. After reading her story, it resonated with me a lot. And due to her persistence, I decided to give her a scholarship under Education Over Debt. She is what propelled me to make it into a 501c3 organization so that I could continue to do the work in the community. Please help me welcome to the show, Ms. Kayla. Hi, Kyla. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for coming on to the Education of a Dad podcast. Let's just get right into it, Kayla. Tell me a little bit about how your experience has been your freshman year at college. Um, my experience has been very unique. It's different than I expected it to be, like growing up all these years and saying, like, I can't wait to go to college. I knew it would be different, and I am on campus, which I'm really happy about. But it's just, it's different than I expected. And what do you think some of your challenges has been mostly with? Um, talking or being able to communicate with people uh, virtually has been, has taken extra effort and also communicating with professors. Um, but I feel like I'm making the best of it. I'm trying to. Okay. Do you find that your professors um, do a lot of like, reaching out to you all as students to make sure you understand the concept or information that they've been given to you or have they created more resources for you to connect with them as well as connect to other people? Do you all have a lot of group work? Um, I, I think that they're trying their best to provide additional resources, but I think that everyone is just going through a learning curve right now. Um, they're reaching out, but I think that it's definitely more on the student to claim their education is a term that I've recently learned. So it's more so on us. And as far as group projects, we are still having those, but they're done in ways that we don't have to meet up because everyone is not um, on campus. So we have to like set up our own Zoom calls and communicate through group me, but it's teaching us to take initiative for ourselves. And it's become easier just over the pandemic with um, the different technologies. Okay. And then how is the roommate situation going with you all? Do you all have one person per apartment or two people per apartment? How is that? Um, I think some people do have two people, but I personally have one roommate. Um, we have something called contact tracing through the Safer Illinois app. It's something my campus has created. So we get test COVID tested every other day and it just makes it easier to keep track of like who you're coming in contact with and make sure that you and your roommate are safe while living in the same space. And it makes me feel a lot safer. Really? And what type of testing are they doing for COVID? Um, we have saliva samples and just like a little tube and that'll come back within a day. Okay. And are you all next in line for getting a vaccine or have they talked to you all about getting the vaccine? Um, I think eventually that we will all have to get back vaccinated. Most um, essential workers have already gotten theirs. And next year, I'm actually going to be an RA. So I will be considered an essential worker and I will have to get my, my vaccination. Okay, well, that's good. Congratulations on becoming an RA next year. You already applied and they accepted you for RA next year? Yes, right now I'm just patiently waiting on to find out my position. 
Okay. All right. Well, congratulations. That's good to know. How has everything been as far as the cafeteria and eating on campus? Um, we are able to use dining dollars and also just the regular cafe credit. Uh, when the food is not great, we're relying on Uber Eats a lot, but um, we're able to socially distance inside of the cafeteria and it's nice. Okay. Well, that's good. Have you joined any clubs or organizations inside your major as well as outside of your major? Yes, I've joined both. So um, one that I'm really passionate about is Health of the Homeless, and we're providing health essentials and food to the housing insecure population of Urbana-Champaign and Root to Roof. We're, right now, we're currently working on a project um, that's sustainable for students who are trying to shift into a more educationally focused life. So we're creating a homework and learning center for them. Okay. And why does that stand out to you the most? Um, personally, I'm just really passionate about um, helping other people become more focused in education because I'm really passionate about education and I see the importance in it. So just helping someone who's trying to like make that change in their life is important to me. And also being an urban planning major, I focus on design and how people interact with their environment. So I just thought that this was a perfect mix for me. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Are you all going to incorporate any type of mental health classes for them since they're having some challenges with staying focused on education, maybe helping them to learn how to express themselves? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually not sure what's going to be the programming that's going on, but we're just focusing on how the environment and the built environment is impacting them okay. and just trying to create like an environment that'll be positive. OK. OK, well, that's good to know that you all are thinking about, you know, creating an environment and aesthetics and making sure that the environment is something positive. Um that they can embrace. What's something that you think you've learned about yourself um, th this freshman year? Um, learning to be persistent in um, communicating with people, whether that be through scholarships or reaching out to professors, because everyone is like handling COVID in a different way. And just like having, learning to stay on top of it and take that, um, that first step of communication, because all the time people don't reach out to you, you'll have to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's good. Um, I think that's very good to learn that skill set up in persistent. That's pretty <laughs> how I ended up giving you the scholarship last year is because you were so persistent. So being persistent can help you in so many avenues in your life to come because things will not always be easily given to you or sometimes it may be a little bit harder or some people may not want to give things to you. So being persistent is pretty much how you can navigate and get the things that you want out of life. Um, with that being said, with you being persistent, how are your classmates handling? Are they being as persistent or do you see that they have a little bit more challenge with schoolwork and scholarships and things like that? I think from talking to just classmates and friends, I think a lot of people are drained and kind of finding it hard to stay motivated, which I understand because I also am someone who just learns better being face to face with my professors and teachers. Um, I, I think that they're having a harder time, but when we can, we try to like find new ways to just keep ourselves motivated or when we can do something in person. So it's a challenge for everyone. I think we're all still learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it can be challenging just learning everything online and not really having that interaction because I find even I took a new job recently and I find that even just learning things, you know, virtually when you're in the office, you can see what people are doing, what screens they're looking at, little things that they don't tell you that they're doing or different ways that people may learn, but it definitely helps you to do your job better or to learn a subject better by sometimes seeing things that people don't think about that's important, but you see that that's yeah. actually something that's helping them to learn something better or, you know, grasp a concept. So you mentioned Absolutely. that you, <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that you've applied to scholarships. How many scholarships have you applied for so far? Um, since high school, like probably no, like this year, freshman year. Oh, okay. Um, probably I would say about twenty five or thirty. Um, I have been awarded a few, which is good, and that just keeps me motivated to keep applying. 
Okay. Okay. So that's good. How many have you gotten? So, or how much in money have you got? How much money have you got so far? Um, I'm not sure on exact numbers, but I have been able to cover the cost of this whole year and next year. Okay. That's good. And then by you being an RA, that should take care of your housing. So that's yes. good. Okay. That's good. Do you encourage other people to apply to scholarships to maybe get those strategies to apply or no, not really? Yes. You know, I, I think everyone should apply to scholarships because scholarships are really just free money. And if you're passionate about something, you just have to find a way to put it into words and communicate it to these committees because, like, this is just having someone else invest in your future. And I think it just makes it easier to focus on school when you're not worried about the financial aspects and it just makes life easier to apply and win scholarships and I promise if you apply you'll get something or at least get new opportunities if not selected. What do you, what do you tell students that have a challenge with writing the essays for the scholarships? Um, I would say utilize your resources. Um, I know last year especially I really um, relied on my teachers to like maybe if I wanted them to read over an essay or even use the essays that you use like in class for something or there's a lot of websites that will teach you formats and just like just like staying on top of it and just using every resource that you can to perfect your application right yeah and I think it was good that you say even using essays that you may have used before in classes sometimes you could just tweak one or two things and make it fit whatever that prompt is that one school may have and I think sometimes maybe students forget about that or they think they mm -hmm. always have to start over from scratch but you're not always especially as far as your personal statement <laughs> you know that's gonna probably be the same for the most part you are who you are but some of the other essay prompts may have a little bit more things you have to start over and think about or tweak so that's that's good. What are you looking forward to next year? For one, I'm really hoping that COVID limitations can be limited because I, I've said it that just being virtual is not the best thing. Well, at least not for me. So I'll be happy to have some more in-person interactions and um, just like advancing in my classes that I'm taking, I'm really passionate about my major. So I'm excited to just keep learning more about that. Okay. And what made you decide to pick urban planning as your major to begin with? Well, I was originally interested in architecture, but I know myself when I'm not a math person so much and engineering type person. So, and I'm also very passionate about community service and working with people themselves. So I found urban planning was a good mix between the environment and also people. So once I learned about it, I just stuck with it and I loved it. Yeah, well, that's good. At least you have a purpose or a passion behind what you do. And you, my undergrad major was accounting and I was really passionate about um, really money, to be honest with you, learning how to accumulate wealth. And I went the accounting route. I should have went to finance, but didn't know at the time. So I went the accounting route, but I'm still grateful that I went to accounting because I learned a lot of things, especially with their sale and how to um, really checks and balances when it comes to money, which helped me in finance. So having that discipline to work through a sale, learning the checks and balances. Uh, I was an auditor for a few years prior to working in finance. So all that stuff kind of helped me to be better as a financial advisor and now serving as a manager of the team. So everything works out, you know, and so it's good that you have a real purpose and passion behind what you want to do and you're staying focused on applying for scholarships, being persistent, reaching out to your teachers, even reaching out probably to your classmates so that you guys can make the group projects to turn them in on time and make sure everything is, you know, met accordingly. So that's really good to hear that you're doing that and that you're staying focused. And <laughs> even the fact that you said that you're getting a little burnt out because um, my niece, she is also, you know, doing a Zoom class and stuff. And I can see easily how you can get burnt out looking at a computer screen all day and not really having that social interaction. So mm. I think it's... It's key to try to find different ways to get outside of that. Glad you shared with us about what you all are doing for COVID and how you're staying safe um, in school and how they're doing the COVID testing and uh, um, the tracing and everything like that. So that's all very good to hear about. Uh, what's one thing that you would, what was some advice that you would give to a young person coming into college their freshman year 
um, for next year? What's something you would share with them? I would say to just be open-minded about the experience in general. Um, we talked about this earlier, but just making sure to apply to these scholarships. I think that that's very important. I hear a lot of people stressing about money. And um, just, yeah, I think my biggest tip would just be to be open to the experience and meeting new people and yeah. Okay, one more thing. You talk about stressing about money. Are you the first in your family to go to college or do you have an older brother and sister? Um, I'm actually an only child, but okay. um, my mom has a degree and she went to college. But I would okay. say our experiences have been very different. Um, just from one in the types of schools that we've gone to, I go to a big 10 school. She went to a very small school, but yeah. Okay. Did she talk to you a lot about having money to go to college or did she get your interest in going to college and applying um, for scholarships? I, I think that, I think my motivation really comes from seeing like her friends, children being successful. And I just wanted the same thing for myself. So I think that that motivated me, but my mom, she definitely was like there by my side to help me apply. It would remind me of things and yeah, she's just very helpful in the process. Okay. Well, that's always good to hear that your mom is being helpful in the process. So thank you so much, Kayla, for joining us on the Education Over That podcast. I will share this with everyone. And the hope is that um, hopefully some young students can see you. some of the things that you're saying. It will inspire them to apply for scholarships as well to attend college and maybe have an open mind for their freshman year, considering that we're in um unprecedented times right we're in times that we never seen before well thank you again for joining me today um and i look forward to talking with you soon i will keep in touch okay thank you thanks for having me all right bye Kayla's experience as a freshman year in college during COVID has been impressive. She shared with us that although her experience isn't what she thought, she's found ways to over-communicate, to be consistent, and to claim her education. She shared with us that she really wants to encourage students to continue to apply for scholarships and utilize their resources to perfect their scholarship application. She believes that if you continuously apply for scholarships, you will likely not only win, but open yourself up for more opportunities. We thank our guest, Kayla, for joining us on the Education Over Dad podcast. Be sure to check out our website at educationoverdad.com and follow us on social media at Education Over Dad. I am Sheena Hogue. Remember to live life, love life, and be well. Well,